Good evening, my name is Karen Harding and I'm a criminal uh, defence lawyer, but I'm also an Admiralty lawyer for foreign fishing crew. And I have been working this weekend uh, for 30 foreign Indonesian fishing crew members and we've been preparing our um, opening for a High Court trial, starting with the draft of a booklet to set out the process under Section 256 of the Fisheries Act that we will need to lead the court through in our application, and also uh, the draft facts and then the evidence to prove those facts and the claim we're making for the wages and then the calculations about that. And so in video one I went through our draft table of contents of, of how we were planning to structure it. That might be reworked as I go through uh, preparation over the rest of the week. And I'm up to now uh, reading you the summary of facts. This is the draft summary of facts. The Seoyan Corporation of Korea recruited 30 Indonesian fishermen who were the second applicants in this matter for trial in the Christchurch High Court to work on vessels owned by them in New Zealand as fishing crew. Pursuant to section 103 of the Fisheries Act 1996, the owner of a foreign fishing vessel was deemed to be the employer of the fishing crew who were deemed to be their employees. The Seo Oyang Corporation of Seoul, Korea, which was also previously known as the Oyang Corporation, operates deep sea fishing and food processing business in South Korea and internationally, including during the material time in the exclusive economic zone of New Zealand. The Seo Oyang Corporation is South Korea's largest fishing company. The Seo Oyang Corporation has no assets in New Zealand at this time. The Seo Oyang Corporation had three vessels operated in New Zealand during the material time period. These were the Oyang 77, the Oyang 70 and the Oyang 75. The Oyang 75 was the replacement vessel for the Oyang 70 which sunk off the coast of Otago on the 18th of August 2010. The Seo Oyang Corporation entered into a partnership with the New Zealand Charter Company, the Southern Storm Fishing 2007 Limited who were the permit fishing holders, who chartered the vessel on a time charter basis from the Seo Oyang Corporation for use in New Zealand, which included the Oyang 70, Oyang 77 and Oyang 75 vessels. The vessel Oyang 77 is estimated at New Zealand $1.5 million and the vessel Oyang 75 has an estimated value of US $7.5 million to $8 million. These valuations are provided by Rob Carpenter, a ship broker and valuer for Workboats New Zealand Limited. The valuation for Oyang 70 was 70, sorry, Oyang 77 was provided on the 12th of June 2011. And the valuation for Oyang 75 was provided on the 24th of October 2011. They were obtained uh, through the Official Information Act. The CEO Oyang Corporation has had been issued uh, by Immigration New Zealand with an authority in principle to recruit foreign crew, an AIP, to recruit foreign crew from New Indonesia to work on vessels owned by them in New Zealand. A requirement of the grant of the AIP is that the owner of the vessels comply with the New Zealand 2006 Code of Practice for Foreign Fishing Crew, also known as the 2006 COP short for code of practice. A further condition of the grant of the authority and principle to recruit the AIP was the requirement to comply with New Zealand employment law including the Minimum Wages Act 1983, the Wage Protection Act 1983 and also the 2006 Code of Conduct for Foreign Fishing Crew and we say the Holidays Act 19, so the Holidays Act 2003 though that's a disputed point about the Holidays Act. Each of the 30 Indonesian fishermen were issued with work permits to work in New Zealand exclusively on the Oyang vessels, which were valid during the material time period that they each worked on the vessels. Pursuant to Section 103 of the Fisheries Act 1996, foreign fishing crew working on foreign fishing vessels in New Zealand on New Zealand work permits are to be paid in accordance with the New Zealand Minimum Wages Act 1983, the Wage Protection Act 1983, um, and other uh, legislation to comply with that legislation in the 2006 Code of Conduct for Foreign Fishing Crew. 26 of the Indonesian foreign fishing crew that make up the 30 fishing crew I'm representing worked on Oyang 77 and I list their names. Four 
sure the Indonesian fishing crew of these 30 applicants worked on Ouyang 70 and I set out their names. Whilst on the vessel, the captain held the second applicant's passports, their seamen's book, their travel documents and their freedom of movement was restricted. There were also oppressive employment contract conditions and the terms of remuneration did not comply with the New Zealand Minimum Wages Act 1983, the Holidays Act 2003 and the 2006 Code of Practice for Foreign Fishing Crew and it also breached the 2006 Wages Protection Act 1983. The second applicant's works for periods varied from 12 hours per day to 24 hours per day on the Ouyang vessels depending on the task to be performed and the amount of the catch. The amount of average hours worked per day was at least, was at least 18 hours per day. Some worked 20. No proper records were kept of the hours that the second applicants worked. The second applicants are the crew. The first applicant is the CIOE Corporation, the Section 256 proceedings. They've made an application over the ship. The crew are making an application over the ship to sell it to get the wages. And the first applicant, the CIOE Corporation, made an application to get the whole ships back. So they're competing applicants. I then list the following uh, fishing crew who had, um, with their names, uh, who worked in the role of deckhand on the upper deck, whose role included performing tasks like throwing the net um, and fixing the net and dealing with the net when it was underwater and that kind of thing. And I also list the names of the crew members who worked uh, below deck sorting and cutting fish and set out what their roles were. And I also list the names of the applicants who worked below deck in the freezer um, and what their roles were. And I also have one fisherman who worked in one role, first of all, for like the first half of the year on the upper deck dealing with the net, and for the second half of the year in the kitchen. We also had some crew applicants who worked as oilers in the engine room, and another applicant who worked in the engine room assisting uh, there, the engine man, and I set out what his roles were. All of the second applicants, being the 30 crew members, worked in abject and unsafe conditions that the Sayuoyan Corporation was responsible for. The abject and unsafe conditions included cramped, dirty and unsanitary living, eating and working quarters. There were inadequate and unhygienic washing and bathroom facilities. There was a lack of access to fresh water supplies and the second applicants were required to bathe and wash their clothes in salt water. The second applicants were forced to work in unreasonable conditions and while they were sick or injured. There were insufficient rest periods. There was insufficient access to medical care, medicine and first aid. The food was not sufficiently nutritious and contained fleas and insects. They were required to work with inadequate and broken working equipment, footwear, gloves and clothing that were not fit for their purpose. The second applicants were subject to uh, verbal abuse from their superior Korean officers. There was a culture of racial abuse, physical assault, sexual harassment and sexual assault on the vessels that created an intimidating and frightening place for the second applicants to work in. The second applicants also worked, also lived on the Oyan vessels in misery. While on the Ouyang vessels in the course of their employment, the second applicants worked excessively long hours, including forced overtime, which they were not remunerated for. The second applicants were required to be on call 24 hours, 7 days a week. Over the length of each of their employment contracts and lived on the vessel. The sleepovers consisted of work. Well, the sleepovers constituted work for the purposes of the Minimum Wages Act 1983. This is because of the significant restraints placed on the freedom of the second applicants over the entire period of their employment. The nature and extent of the important responsibilities placed on them as employees and the substantial benefit to the Sayuoyan Incorporation of having the second applicants available on demand to perform their roles. The second applicants were at their employer's disposal throughout the whole entire period of the sleepover on the vessel and were constantly available to the detriment of their well-being. Given the nature of the employment, the interrupted sleep, the abject conditions on the vessel, the requirement to put up security of property and the withholding of wages, the second applicants claim they are entitled to be paid on a 24-hour, 7-day-a-week basis for the length of their employment contracts because they were forced labour on the vessels. 
and they were abused during the course of their employment so as to be effectively enslaved at sea by the Seo Oyang Corporation and were underpaid their full wage entitlements. The second applicants prior to departing for New Zealand employment the second applicants signed prior to departing for New Zealand employment contract agreements contracts in Indonesia with the Seoyan Corporation's Indonesian manning agents that specified monthly pay rates of between US $200 up to $290 per month. Under the contracts, wages were also to be withheld and were withheld to ensure that the fishing crew member worked the full term of the contract. Where a fishing crew member did not complete the full contract due to illness, resignation or termination, the crew member was met with financial penalties. The second applicants could not decline to perform any work or services for the Seiwoyang Corporation on the vessel or they would risk being terminated. The contracts that the second applicant signed required them to put up security to obtain their jobs on the Ouyang vessels. This included property security of houses and land such as paddy fields or vehicles. This property security predominantly belonged to their parents or other relatives. Or in some case, some of the crew applicants was property belonging to neighbours including a mosque leader. If a crew member was terminated from his employment, then the Indonesian manning agent of the Seoyang Corporation would seize the property security, which would cause extreme financial hardship to the families and push them into extreme poverty. The practical terms of the second applicant's employment met the definition of forced labour. The second applicants worked under the menace of a financial penalty and that they were not free to resign from their employments. As if they were to end their employment prior to their contract end date, they would be subject to financial penalties. The wage calculations provided by an accountant, who I will name in the document, has prepared spreadsheets for each of the 30 fishing crew applicants who comprise this group called the second applicants, and also spreadsheets containing the combined total for the second applicants. In respect of the 26 fishing crew members who worked on OEANG 7, the maximum amount of the unpaid wages claim, which includes a sleepover claim, is New Zealand dollars amount to be included in the document. In respect of the four fishing crew members who worked on OEANG 70, the maximum total amount of unpaid wages claim, which includes a sleepover claim, is New Zealand dollars for a maximum amount to be inserted into the document. The total claim, including a sleepover claim for all 30 of the second applications, is New Zealand dollars amount to be included in the document. The second applicants have made an application under Section 256 of the Fisheries Act 1996 to seek relief from the effects of forfeiture of the vessels Ouyang 77 and Ouyang 75 on the basis they have unpaid wages. The second applicants claim that under Section 256 round brackets 1 round brackets B round brackets Roman numerals little 2 of the Act, they have an interest as quotation marks fishing clue crows quotation marks and unpaid wages over both of these forfeited vessels on the basis that the vessels were in the beneficial ownership of their employer the Seoyang Corporation immediately prior to the forfeiture, who was a party liable for the payment of those wages. The Seoyang Corporation has been unwilling to pay their wages and the only way the second applicants can get their unpaid wages is by a court order to sell the vessels to pay them out of the proceeds of the sale. The second applicants seek orders under section 256 round brackets 11 round brackets little c that's subsection 256 11 subsection c of the Act that the forfeited property of Ouyang 77 and Ouyang 75, being fishing vessels, including the fishing gear, be sold with directions as to the manner of sale of those vessels and that the proceeds be dispersed into their solicitor's trust account to pay their unpaid wages for the solicitor me, uh, to provide to the fishermen. That there is the end of the summary of facts in relation to the wages claim. I might possibly put in the individual amounts, but it starts to get quite big because there's 30 of them, so I've got spreadsheets which I'm going to be attaching which summarise that. All right, and that um, then takes me through to some um, other chapters. I hope you found that information helpful. Thank you for your attention.